Oh, Axel's been here. See, Alexa's on mute. Thank you. Um, let's see. What am I doing? Um, good evening. How sweet. Yeah. Let's do this like this for a second. Yeah. And... Hello, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Oh, you know what? I need to get my water because I don't have my water. Yesterday. He's nice. He's nice and. Um, he's nice. Watch your feet. 
for me. What's your toes? Did he see? He's playful. And what was the other thing you said, Jet? And he's nice and not mean. He's nice and he's not mean. Lily, what's another thing that you can tell us about Jesus? He never leaves you? He never leaves you. That's so true. When, when, no matter what time of the day, hey, Ace, come on this side where I can see you. Sit right up there. Perfect. Excellent. No matter what time of the day, no matter what time of the night, it doesn't matter where you are, what you've done, even if you were just so bad, he doesn't say, well, I can't come to you because you were just bad. Does he say that? No. No. Does he even make you feel bad? No. No. He's so loving and caring and he's full of life. Is there anything dead in Jesus? No. No. Nothing dead in him. Go ahead, tell us. Leave him alone. Just do your favor and turn around. Sorry. Say it one more time. So, do, so let me ask you a question. Does Jesus get slapped? No. No. So is that possible? No. No. Just go up one. Go up one. She asked you to go up one. And you're going to be a good listener who's respectful of other people. Yes. Um, Jesus does care. Jesus does care. Jesus is and Jesus is loving and kind. He's loving and kind. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. He's very handsome and he's very pretty. He's very handsome and pretty. That's true. He is very handsome and pretty. Um, let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever felt fear before? Yes. Yes. Ace, have you felt fear before? Were you ever afraid? You never had a time you were afraid? I think so. What about a dream that was scary? Okay. So let me ask you a question about when you were afraid. Lily, you know you were afraid of something. You were very afraid. And it, and it, it, she doesn't want you to tell all her business to everybody, okay? You were very afraid. And, and it was something that really wanted to take control of your life. You, it, it, it started to take control of your life, didn't it? Yes. It started to try to control you, your thoughts, everything. Even your physical body was being controlled by fear. And what happened? Tell us what happened, because this is a beautiful praise report. Tell us what happened after, after we started to say, well, because mommy, mommy was praying for you for days. And, um, and the Lord gave me a dream. <laughs> well, you didn't know. You, I didn't have to tell you that. I told you dad. The Lord gave me a dream. This is how I knew that daddy was going to be a pivotal answer. What did you do with the last bit of wah wah I gave you? We were all on the carpet. No. Okay. Thank you. And um, the Lord gave me a dream. And in the dream, you're welcome. In the dream, I knew that your dad was going to have to take over in some kind of way. And so that's why that final day, sit down, sit down. Thank you. And that fun. Did you need to talk or is mommy talking? talking? Okay, and when mommy's talking, I'm not talking, you're not talking because you're going to use both your ears to listen. Very good. And that's why I knew your daddy was going to play a pivotal part to help. And that's why daddy stepped in. He brought daddy in because remember, it was just me and you. And then for those many nights, and then finally we got daddy to step in. And 
what happened to that fear? Well, because we were commanding fear to leave you and it was helping, but it was even manifesting, making you feel ill. It was. Where you kept saying, I, 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 I'm in my bed, but every time I go up to my bed, I feel like I'm going to be sick. You remember that? And so, yeah, that's where it, that fear is trying to manifest itself and have an expression in your life. And so what did God do? Because this was paralyzing fear, people. It was paralyzing, crippling fear. She was beyond fearful to the point where it was like every night she would feel ill. And, I, and I'm thinking, and this was going on for like a week. I'm like, what is going on? It would go on and on. She'd be in my room till like one o'clock in the morning. I mean, all the the brakes done come off this vehicle. I'm just like, honey, mommy can't even stay awake. What's what's going on this time? What's wrong? I'm praying and singing over her. And I'm, you know, I'm praying, just asking the Lord, what is going on? We're commanding fear to leave and just all these things. And then we then that final night, I didn't know it was gonna be a final night, but it was the worst night of all of them. And I said, Josh, I think you, it's going to, it's going to have to be you. There's something, he said it was something about what you're going to do something. I don't know what you're going to do, but you have to do something. And he's like, I don't understand what's going on. I'm like, so I just quickly gave him a quick rundown and he's like, okay. And, you know, he came in there and God just gave him wisdom. He didn't have to know, you know, all of everything. God just gave him wisdom and It was in that surrender, my surrender, because I had to surrender because I was doing it. You know, I'm just, it's me, her and the Lord. And that that was how it was going. But the Lord's like, I want you to let it go and give it to, give it to Josh. I'm like, what? (laughs) Um, I don't know about that. It was, it was easier said than done because there was a point where then Josh turned to me and he said, now you go to bed. I was like, what? It was one thing when I gave it to you. Now you're telling me to leave. He's like, go, go lay down and go to sleep. You need to go to sleep. And I, and I'm like, now I'm having an issue. I'm like, well, I, I, I'm like, I can't. I was like, I, I can't, I can't do it. He said, you can, you can do it. And I, and I almost cried. I said, Josh, I said, but that's my, that's my baby. And he said, I know, sweetie it's okay and so you're welcome love (laughs) you can't even get down but what tell us like what happened with that fear as soon as i left now it was it was still like traumatizing her she was still so traumatized it was just everything but i had we both had to come to a point where it was just i had to say lord I know that I already surrendered my children to you. I said, but, and even in this, I just surrender everything to you that you're going to make it right. Like right now, it was going to be right now and I'm going to leave. And I left, I went to my room. I had that strong urge to come back. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Got in the bed. But right when I left, Lily really said, what did you say to me? Like, mommy, you said, mommy, you can. Mommy, you can leave. She said, mommy, you can leave. Cause she didn't want to be with with Josh. It was like, oh no, I have to have mom. But she said, Mommy, you can leave. I want you, I want you to leave, and I want you to go lay down. So I did that. And in that moment, when I let my my head hit the pillow, I had like surmounting fear because fear will come. It was just like it was oppressive. I'm like, it was laying on me like a boulder. And I'm so I, I'm, I get in the bed. And I say, Lord, I just thank you. Mm-mm. I was like, I just thank you. I don't, I don't usually go into a whole lot of rebuking. I just say, Lord, I, I thank you. I reject that feeling. I'm not going, I'm not partnering with it. I get exhausted trying to rebuke every, every feeling over and over and over. And I just go right into thanking God. I laid my head down in that moment. It was like, there was a burst in the atmosphere that left and everything. And then Josh comes back in way later and I was like, did she finally go to sleep? He was like, oh, she went to sleep a long time ago. He was like, I was just listening to Adventures in Odyssey because they had Adventures in Odyssey playing uh, with Christian uh, radio drama. And he was like, oh, I was just listening to the rest of the... And I'm laughing. I thought she went to sleep a while ago. Like it was, I just couldn't, I was just like, Lord, I just thank you. I just surrendered to you. Just thank you so much. But, and then 
she was free from that. And then the next day at night, because it would only come at night. At night, she started to feel it again. What did you do? I told Fairly. To show us how you did it. You can stand up. They're looking. Wait, what was it? Just show it. Just say it and tell us. Stand okay. up. It's like when you take the stage to have your, your little part and everybody's looking. You're not stage right. Go ahead. <laughs> you're, you're teaching it. Okay. Oh, fear came. I said, fear, leave me now in Jesus' name. All right, what happened? And it left me. It left you. And then and then it didn't come back again, did it? No. Nope. It never came back again. You drove that fear out and you trusted in the Lord. It was amazing. Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. It was even the that fear was so bad. At one point, you came into my room and told me you thought you were no longer what? A Christian. She said, I, I don't think I'm I'm I don't think I'm a Christian anymore, mommy. I said, why in the world would you say that? it was like at one o'clock in the morning? Why would you say that? And she said, because what, what was your reason? Do you remember? Just yep, she's all the stuff I've done bad and being afraid and all this. She was like, I, I don't think I'm a Christian anymore. I said so that's a lie from the devil, that's from the pit of hell. That is a lie. He's trying to see he because the entryway was fear. And all he wants to do if he can get in there is get a foothold. And then you start questioning your own salvation. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> like, do you really believe you're a Christian? Right, yeah. You're not a Christian because if you were, you wouldn't you, feel fear. <laughs> you were dead. Right, right. Just like God. Yeah. You'll be God himself. Right, exactly. <laughs> He's nothing but a, just a twisted liar. And it's like trying to twist the truth. Trying to twist the truth. She it's said copycat. He made an old Bible. He, he does. He's he is. He's a copycat. So that was wonderful. Thank you, Lily, for sharing that with us. Because little screechy baby. Hey, don't you fight. <laughs> but um no matter what you're going through in your life stop trying to tell alexa what to do i command alexa <laughs> um just a second babies just a second hey look at me don't bite andrew you're able to listen all on your own. You're a big boy. You're going to be four years old. No biting. Don't be acting like you didn't just try to bite. I saw you. <laughs> I expect you to be a good listener while you're sitting here. You understand? Do you know the song? I know you do. Jesus loves the little yeah, yeah. Jesus, that's wrong. <laughs> Let's sing Jesus Loves the Little Children. And one more. You can still sing. One more, John. Jesus, yes, Jesus. One more, John, sing it. Jesus, Jesus. Axel saying Jesus was a little hand raised. That's right, Jesus. When we get done singing, Jesus loves little children. Then you may, then you may, are you listening? Then you may be dismissed. Okay. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. You're not here for no saying no Gigi. Red, yellow. Red, so Native American. Yellow, that's what we would say. Asian, black, me, white, daddy. You're a mixture of colors, so you count. Okay. If they went through every mixture, that song would be awfully long. Red and yellow, black and white, mixed in with red and yellow, mixed with red, white, and yellow. It would just be at that point, we forgot what the song was about. It's now a color mix song, but 
So they just say red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Now, this is the body of Christ. And you know why we take it. It's communion. Sit down, I'll give you some. Good job. Hand out. Stacy keeps scooting down. I'm telling him to go back up. But he just so when down. everybody goes upstairs, I guess you're going to be the only one down here in timeout. How many chances should I give you to listen? I gave you many. This is the last chance. If you don't follow the directions, then you have paid all the money to go right to timeout. Listen. No one likes the punishment, so listen before there's even a punishment. What, what does this represent? Your body. Okay, little, little baby, hold on. Mommy will give you some water. Jesus' body. Lily, can you give us, can you thank the Lord for his body? And then we can take in faith. What, what, what do I do? Well, what, what, what do you think you should say? Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. Oh, that's wow. wonderful. So let's thank say you. it. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us and spilling your blood out for us. Yes, and what is that? Yes, there you go. To, which washes away our sins and makes us whole and gives us Does it make the, us new? It makes us new, yes. And it gives us that ability to call on Jesus in those situations when we need him and at any time. He's the so doorway. It doesn't, so it doesn't matter if you're at the playground. Oh, yeah, you're doesn't matter you're at the playground. It doesn't matter where you are. Jet was afraid on, at the playground on the monkey bars, and he said, "Fear, leave me." And we'll say, and "Now he's just full on does the monkey bars." So we just thank you, Jesus, that that your body being broken for us, open the way for we so that we can have you more of you, and have Papa God, and have Holy Spirit, and have eternal life in heaven, and have love that we. <laughs> can't even explain so we thank you for it we break it in faith because his body was broken here go you want this no i'm only gonna have wawa yeah. and you may you may go ahead and sit and we just thank you lord and we're gonna take it hey ace ace that's not important it's not and there was no accident if you get on her bed you did that on purpose because you had to climb the ladder and everything. That was one accident. We just thank you, Lord. When you do something that you shouldn't do, and it makes you feel guilty, telling the truth is the right thing to do. Also asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Thank you. Forgive me, mommy. Of course I forgive you. Okay. Mom, and mm -hmm. I was scared to get my ears pierced, but I told fear to leave me, mm -hmm. and, and I got them pierced no problem. No problem at all. So we thank you, Lord, and you are now dismissed. I'll call you back for that later. Go ahead and take the little one. Oh, Axel, putting that in there. Yes, I already said you could. What did I say before him? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so go on. Take Mario. No fighting. And Ace? No jumping onto that floor. Or mommy will tell little Alexa here to send Ace downstairs and Ace will go to timeout. Do you understand? What did I say? You said you understood. No, what did I ask you not to do? Not to jump on the floor. So you're going to remember that. And I already respected that. You already respected that. High five. Double high five. Double high five. Take Mario. Thank you. Okay. God is so good. She was absolutely terrified. Absolutely terrified uh, of she had, <laughs> she went to get her ears pierced and she read the it's like it's kind of like the disclaimer of it that says what could happen to you if it became infected. And for whatever reason, 
that was the little thing that the devil used to terrorize her. She would lay down and be absolutely in petrified fear. Like, oh, it's because it's going to become infected. I'm, you know, and it's like, well, you know, she because it was a little sore the first day, obviously, because she just got it pierced. Um, and I said, it's OK. It's OK that it's a little sore. But she tried to be strong and stuff those feelings and not saying, hey, mom, I'm scared of this. She didn't even tell me that she read the, the, the thing. I didn't know she did. That girl's got a, uh, she's got a high school grade level reading. So it's hard when she gets to reading something and she can understand it. And I'm like, like, the, like any commercial that gives you side effects and at the bottom, it's got the whole disclaimer and she can read it like that. I'm like, don't read this stuff. Don't read that. So I'm all kind of, and at the end, it's always in death, you know, like, even though you're not, she's not taking it, it, that produced fear that because the spirit behind it was fear and it tries to come in with that. She became so afraid and she was so afraid in herself and she just didn't tell me. She it started off with saying, I just don't feel well. And so, you know, I'm just trying to deal with that. You're not feeling well. Um, and then eventually you know, she's like, I don't know. I just, I just feel like I'm going to throw up. I don't even, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm like, okay, you know, coming against that in Jesus name. <sighs> Singing to her, just rubbing her hair. I mean, this, we're going for hours. I'm like, I got to pass out at some point, you know? And I'm like, you know, I think you'll be okay to go to your bed. And each day it got longer and longer and longer. It was like almost a week long ordeal. And it was probably about the third or fourth day. I was like, there's something else going on here. This is not, not natural. Obviously it wasn't natural to begin with. Um, and so, you know, I'm praying, I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, what is this? I'm just asking him, inquiring of him. He just, he always gave me, always gave me peace. And even though I was still like, but what's going on? He always gave me peace. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, tell me something. And I'm, and you know, I, later on, I'm like, why didn't you just tell me? Because you know what? Lily had a victory to win. That's why. No one's going to be grandfathered in. This was something, a battle for her to break down. For her to defeat the enemy in her own life. Because there is no little Holy Spirit. They get all of Holy Spirit. They don't get a little Holy Spirit or a little. Yes, son. Where is that, honey? It's in that box. Are you able to get it? No. It's not. It might be in my room. It's not here. Maybe ask your big brother to help you. And um, you know, it's one thing that mommy comes and does it. It's another thing when you can do it on your own. And um. <laughs> It was rough for me. I'm like, Lord, I just want to know what's going on with her. And eventually, it was probably the day right before the last the last day where she's like, I, you know, she came in there and she was like, I don't think I'm a. Um, she had told me that she didn't think she was a Christian anymore, and it was many things that she told me up until this point. But she was like, she we were staying in the bathroom because she said she felt like she was going to be ill, and um. And she's like, mom, I, I, I read the, the thing on the thing and, and it said this, 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 and da, 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 I'm like, you don't have to be afraid of that. You know, and I taught, you know, telling her everything I could tell her. And then that was helpful. But then that last day, it was like, it came back with vengeance and it didn't want to let go. It just didn't want to let go of her. And, but that night before he had get the Lord gave me a dream. And I remember in the dream specifically, it was something that I just could not do. I couldn't do it alone. And I was just like, I just, I'm like, I don't know what, what I can do. I just don't get it. And then it was like, I just heard a yelling voice, get Josh, get Josh. You got to go get Josh. And I was like, I'll get Josh. And I turned around and started running. And then I woke up from the dream. I thought, what is this dream? And later that night, I'm like, oh, it's got to be this. And so, you know, I'm like, Lord, why didn't, you know, why didn't it make any difference 
those other times because you know because no one no one can walk you through your through your battle and do it for you someone can be there for you but you got to learn to stand up and fight for yourself she is very capable of taking the enemy down and she does it very well this day very well you know they all do they all learn something before her learning anything about rejecting fear in this way jet was the first one to have learned it but then something crazy actually ended up happening after all that fear was broken and everything the several weeks later her piercings were healed and she could put new earrings and we made sure that they were new earring things or whatever for new ears or newly pierced ears thank you Holy Spirit, for newly pierced ears and the very that very first day i cleaned them and i i cleaned them i cleaned her ears and then i put the new ones in and she went to sleep with those on she stayed in them all day went to sleep with those on and the next morning she said mom will you change these out i want to put something else in i thought okay sure so we can, she brought everything for me to clean it. And I went, as soon as I went and I took the earring off, they were both infected. White, pussy infected. And the earring was like stuck to it. And I, that hit me. I was like, what? <laughs> and she's like, it, it hurts, it hurts. They were swollen. And I was like, and then I said, the very first thing I said to the Lord was, this was the very thing she was afraid of. And now here it is. And I was just, I said, this can't be. I did everything right. This can't, this can't be. Oh my goodness. I was not happy. I was, I was actually upset. I was upset. I was, I was very upset. I cleaned your ears the best I could, but I could see there was, there was so much white around the ear underneath the skin that I cleaned it, but it was infected. Clearly I called the people who pierced it. And she was like, well, you know, you might need to take her to a pediatrician. She might need to get an antibiotic. It might need to be da 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 da. You know, it, it, we have to. You have to treat these things kind of quick because you don't want it to continue on. I'm like, this is insane. Her ears were perfectly fine yesterday, and and I then I went to go tell Josh, and Josh is a, Josh is a a person who sleeps, and when you wake him up, he's like, uh huh. And looking at you, but then you, he just starts snoring. How are you sleep snoring when I'm talking to you still? Huh? Like what? <laughs> and he's like, I'm sorry, I have to sit up. That'll help me, you know. Boy, just go on to sleep. You ain't awake. But <laughs> so I'm telling him, and he's like, and I'm just, and I'm just, it's just urgent to me. And I'm like, what do you think I should do? Should I take her up to, you know, her doctor? Should I try to take her up to Alta? I mean, what what do you think? And he's just like, I was like, okay, I need to leave. Cause I, I was like, I got to go downstairs. I went downstairs. I said, Jesus, I need you to speak to me right now. I was like, I, you have to talk to me right, like right now. You can't leave it for later. I need to know something. Why? And in the middle of me saying that he said, she's okay. She's fine. And I said, what should I do? I said, but I'm angry though. I'm angry at me because I feel like it's obviously there's something I did that was not right. I was like, I'm so angry. And, and he's like, it's okay. He said, it's okay. And then he just took that anger and all that sadness or just, the, just feeling like I can't even tell, I can't, can I, should I tell Lily that they're infected? Like this would be a whole nother, like, I don't want to open up that, you know, that, that healing. I don't want to be like, here's another scar for you. You know, I'm like, what am I going to do? If I'm going to take her to the doctor, I got to tell her something, you know? And so he was just like, it's okay. You don't, he said, and don't, he said, she'll be fine. And I said, should I take her up to the doctor? Mm -mm. I said, should I take her up to Alta? He said, no, they'll say things that will scare her. And he said, J -j -j you're just do what she said about the Neosporin. So the lady on the phone, she said, well, what you could do in the meantime is you could clean it with alcohol and then put Neosporin on the front and the back and on the ear earring and put it through her ear. And if it doesn't start to clear up, you know, or anything, or you could do that and then take her to the doctor. If it doesn't start to clear up, you can bring her here or take her to the doctor. We can assess it together. You know, I thought, okay, he said, just do that. It'll be fine. He had no urgency. It was like, just do that. It'll be fine. I'm like, I said, okay, I feel great. I mean, I skipped upstairs. I was like, okay, come here, Lily. And I just did all that and it was done. 
every single day it was like dramatically different dramatically at one point I didn't you couldn't tell when it was in the process of healing you couldn't tell which where was the hole I had to take the earring from the back to the front because there were many holes in the front and so I mean and I, I mean I'm just like God he said it's gonna be fine I was like so it's gonna be and I was and when I was telling him, I said it's, it's gonna look perfect I was telling him it's gonna look perfect like it's never like nothing ever happened to it and it does it looks perfect like nothing ever happened to it it just it kept getting just better 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 till they're perfect and there's not one thing and you know what in the midst of that she had no fear none because the thing that was so scary had no power over her Oh, but I, it, you know, it's, it's that I'm in the fire, but I feel no, fir, no fire. I don't even smell like smoke that all, all that buildup of fear the, that showed fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. All it can do is lie to you. And even when the thing happens, if it ever happens, doesn't mean it will. A lot of times it doesn't, but if he just so happens to take you through that fire, know that you're not going to be you're not going to be burned. You're not going to be singed. You're not going to feel fear. It didn't say when they were thrown into the furnace that they felt fearful. Empowered. And I'm just like, wow. I said, all I could say was, Lord, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for all that you have done and what you've shown her because I can't have the faith for her. She has to have the faith for herself because that's what's going to carry her. And oh my goodness. So, 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 so beautiful. So beautiful. What he, what he will do if we just surrender to him. I wanted to show this again, because I know you've probably already seen it, but it goes along with what we are going to read. And this is something that I wrote for Jesus. And it just says, oh, I made it for him. It just says, Jesus, without your presence, I shrivel and die. Oh, but your loving mercy pours into me and I flourish beside your nourishing water and life giving breath. To know him in this way has changed my life. Has changed my life. It wasn't enough for him to just be the God who they just say is God of the Bible. That wasn't enough. He had to be, he was made flesh for a reason. And, and he be, was so personal for a reason. And every single thing, we need his presence so much. And the song he wanted me to play, and I'm going to try to play it on Alexa and just kind of move Alexa away so she's not super loud. Uh, her, I say, she, I know, I was, Alexa, name? stop. Um, I should have never said your name, but um, his presence means so much. And I, we've heard this song before, but this is what he wanted. So I'm going to play it. Alexa, play Hearing Your Presence by Dennis Jernigan. Okay, Hearing Your Presence, live by Dennis Jernigan from Apple Music. In our circumstances, in the darkness, in our trials. If he was not here, I would not have been here. How about you? I don't know if you can hear it. We need his presence and he is here. In your presence, I find mercy. In your presence. I find your grace in your presence. There's no hurry in your presence. I see your face here in your presence. Father, pour out your mercy. Here in your presence, Lord, pour out your grace. And here in your presence, there is no need to hurry. Here in your presence, I will see your face. 
At the end of that song, Dennis actually continues to, he stops the song, but he ends up preaching a bit. And one of the things that he says, oh, <laughs> I forgot that, Lord, because um, I ended up was talking to the children. But one of the things that Jesus told me, <laughs> he said, when I was typing out, taking the body with affectionate worship in our hearts, Jesus said, just see me feeding it to you. He's like, and then I laughed. Uh, and he's like, he said, I, I watch you chew it. <laughs> it's like, he watches you eat it. That's, it's so important. Like, he watches you chew it. Like, <laughs> you ever see somebody who's like, here, eat my food that I made, you know? And they just look at you intently while you're eating it. It's like, you know, you, you kind of want to hurry up and eat it so that you can respond, you know? They just want to know, like, you know, was it like, you know, like, was it everything or, or what, you know, someone's, um, they pour their everything into the meal. So they want to know how much you like it, you know, and so, but <laughs> this being a spiritual meal, this is the same way. It's funny because we, we do that in the, in the natural, but we don't realize that we're, we actually just, 
we, who we get that from. He's watching you eat it. But one of the things that Dennis Jernigan um, spoke, and I feel like one of the things he spoke at best when he said that intimacy with our Lord is like this, here is my heart into me see, intimacy, into me see. And then he says back, here is my heart into me see. Um, that is what we are going to do today is see into Jesus. We are gonna read um, song, Song. Yes, um, oh, you did. Good job. Thank you. You knew just where it was. Big brother to the rescue. I'm tell you sometime. Wait. Well, not, not right now. Thank you, baby. Um, I'm going to, I am going to read it, but I'm going to also read the footnotes in here. So the footnotes in here are they're honestly priceless because instead of I you could flip and flip back and forth from here to the strongs and I love that the the that the footnotes um in the passion translation this is from the U version bible um or bible app I should say the U version bible app and you can actually get it online as well um and it does the parallel bible and everything it doesn't have the strongs concordance attached to it but you can always pull it up in a separate tab but one of the things that's really nice about the passion translation is that the guy something simmons brian or brandon simmons um he incorporated a lot of that in the notes of it so um that is what i'm gonna read from here and i'm gonna do the notes too so let me go like this Jesus, I just want to, I just thank you that you're here. I think your presence is so strong. Your fire is so strong. Papa, we just thank you. I, 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 I know that you meet us here. I just thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to enter in with you. One of the things I think many people struggle with, Lord, is joy, like true joy, just feeling fulfilled and in, 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 in joy, like true, true joy, the type that lasts and doesn't, it's not situational, it doesn't depend on situation, but true joy, that fulfillment. One of the things that I notice with you, Lord, is that understanding this, our position with you, just understanding how we sit with you, just who we are to you and, and recognizing and, and, and understanding who you are to us, that brings so much joy, so much true joy, so much true joy. I just ask that you would help every person to experience. I know that you, I know that you're going to do it. Me asking is almost silly because this is your mission. So I'll just thank you. I thank you for helping every person to experience you in this way, to understand who they are and how you see them and who you are to them. Understand because Yes, it, it, we've lived an incomplete life. We've only always seemed to have known the natural side of us, but there's two parts of us, well, three, but the one of the most important that it makes us like you is our spirit. We are a spirit who has a soul, it lives in a body, but the body is the number one thing that's talked about, period. The soul is just barely being touched on and the spirit is left out. We don't even understand what spirit life is. It's all the things I, that we think are strange. I promise a lot of times I'm like, so strange. 
so strange. Strange because it's different. It's something that we, we're not even able to do in the natural. But I wouldn't have had it any other way, Lord. I just thank you. Thank you for opening up spiritual eyes, opening up spiritual ears. I thank you, Jesus. You are good and you are amazing and everything that we could ever want. I just thank you that you were you were doing this thing your way. And I thank you for it. Thank you for the spiritual communion with you. Thank you that you're going to be here through re this reading. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. All that you're doing. All the revealing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I said yesterday that the Shulamite woman, is, or the Shulamite, it doesn't actually say woman, but the Shulamite. And of course, it doesn't make the, it doesn't really make the distinction. It does, but it doesn't. Because like I said before, men and women are the bride of Christ. Because it, and it's hard for us to, that's where you, mm. Jet made an excellent point about the devil is a copycat because he is. He really is. But everything he does, he perverts. Only the Lord God could say that men and women alike would be the bride of Christ and it not be something twisted and warped. Because he's not, he's not looking at He's not looking at your outside makeup of you. He's not looking at your sexual organs. He's not looking at you in a sexual way at all. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't look at you in an intimate way. It's totally different. Problem is we're so warped in our own mind because we're so attached to our natural part of ourselves, the physical part of ourselves that it's hard to separate and understand what his true realities are. That doesn't stop them from being true. It just makes us ignorant of them. The devil warps things so much. That's all he can do. He just wants to have the same thing that God has, only his obviously produces death and destruction. Whereas nothing in the Lord produces death or destruction, sickness or disease. Well, I just thank you. But I mean, this coming right out the gate, this one comes out the gate, like you just begin. Number one says the most amazing song of all by King Solomon. I, okay, so the very first footnote on here is for the Shulamite. And it says the word for Shulamite and the word for Solomon are taken from the are taken from the same Hebrew root word. One is masculine, the other feminine. The name Solomon occurs seven times in this book, which points to us points us to the perfect King Jesus Christ. We are one spirit with our King, united with Him. You and I have become the Shulamite, and I love that it says that. So important that we understand that. You're united in your spirit. Like I know I said before that everything is a shadow, um, a shadow. I mean, we think about if there, what was the one thing Holy Spirit told me? <laughs> Years later after I saw the very first avatar the blue avatar i'm not saying i'm not promoting it by any by any means there were a lot of issues in that movie but it was like when it came out forever ago but one of the things when that he showed me later and i was not thinking about that was when when his rivers of living water flow from him into you and he was like and i and i was talking to him about it and he's and he's like he showed me how that, if you've ever seen the blue avatar, they, there's like a, a portion of their tail that they link together and that they consider that like you're mated for life at that point. You, you can't, you then cannot go and do that with somebody else. It's just not, you're made it for life. That's it. And he was saying, they just took that from me. And I was just like, 
I thought that's amazing that that's amazing because you are, it, it's your spirit becoming one with him. When he says, I want, I want you to be one, you know, I, I want us to be one as me and the father are one. And so it's that, it's that spirit connect. You cannot remove him. You cannot remove Jesus from Papa God, just like you can't remove Holy Spirit from Papa God. They, he, they're one and the same. And that's how he wants us one and the same. So verse two says, let him smother me with his kisses, his spirit kiss divine. Yesterday, oh my gosh. So last, <laughs> oh my gosh. So last night, um, something so strange happened and I was like, what? I said, Lord, I'm, I'm, my, my mind is baffled to the point where I don't know what to think. I just feel like I don't even, I don't even, I just don't know. I'm lost for words, but then I, at the same time, I need to ask you a hundred questions. And I was like, because Jesus took my hands. I'll have to just explain it. Jesus took my hands. He put one on this side, one on that side, like far away out and then he put his hands on it on my hands his face on my face and and we were just like together like that and I'm like I'm just don't know like I was like I just don't know and I was like and please don't ever ask me to explain this to anybody which obviously I'm doing it right now but I was like I'm so I just don't know like I was like I don't know what to even think about like I can't have a thought and before that he took my skin off of my body which was interesting he just unzipped it and I was glowing, like that's your spirit. And then he just put his hands on my hands and it's just like his face on my face, eyes on my eyes, his nose on my nose, his mouth on my mouth, chin on chin. We were chest to chest. I'm like, I just don't know. And he, and he said later, I said, just explain it to me. I just put it in, put it in the layman's turn that I can even just have a, a, just something that I can hold on to that I just need to know. And he was like, he said, <laughs> he, of course, didn't just come out and just tell me right away because <laughs> it just cracks me up. But he said, how do you think, let me see, how did, what did he say? He said, Okay, you didn't say the name, but he said, how do you, he just basically said, how do you think he knew to do that, is what he said to me. And I was, and I knew what he meant. He was talking about in the Old Testament, <laughs> when Elijah put his face to face to that child. <laughs> and I was like, mom, I had that so many times about the cocoon thing, unzipping the skin. I know. I was like, that reminded me of that movie, which I don't know much about that movie. I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie Cocoon. When they, She said that's exactly where they got the idea from the movie Cocoon. They unzipped their skin and they were spirit light beings. Yeah. And they were like in the pool of water or something like that. Right, Ma? I don't remember. I don't really re recall the movie, but I promise that's exactly what I thought. I was like, that reminds me. It's oddly familiar of that movie with those old people that I remember, but I don't remember what it's about. Probably saw it when I was a child, but <laughs> but yes. And 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 he and so he said, "Where do you think he got the idea?" As is what he said to me, and I thought. And I had to think for a second in myself and Holy Spirit was like, it brings life. And later I'm like, it brings life. And I just kept pondering that. And as this morning, I was walking Axel up and down the street on the side, walking his stroller because he wanted to go outside. And I'm just talking to Jesus and, and just, just talking to him about everything. And when I, and I said, I don't know where you want me to read at, you know, and I don't know. He didn't tell me then either. He didn't tell me until like 10 minutes before we we're getting ready to go on. And he told me that it's going to be the first one. So I said, okay. And right here under the second, uh, the second verse, I thought I reading, I'm reading. I'm like, I said, see, it says his spirit kiss divine. Cause that I'm like, it's like you're, cause that's what it was like. Well, in here, when you read the footnote, which made it even better, <laughs> it was like it made it even better. Um, so the footnote, there's two of them. So the first one says to enter the doorway of Jesus's heart. We must begin by saying, let him, we only begin, or we only bring him a yielded heart and must let him do the rest. 
God's loving grace means that he will be enough for us. We can let him be everything to us. And we don't begin by doing, but by yielding. So that was very first. And he stood in front of me. I wasn't like, hey, let's go here and let's go do that. He just took my hand and put it there and then took the other one and put it there. And then he just came very close. I'm just like, whoa. But the footnote for this, the spirit kiss is what made Adam. I was just blown like that is exactly what you were saying. The man of clay into a living expression of God, dust and deity met when the master kissed his spirit wind into Adam. The word of God is like a kiss from the mouth of our beloved, breathing upon us the revelation of his love. Well, (laughs) the word of God is Jesus. (laughs) It is like a kiss from the mouth of our beloved. It says the Shulamite doesn't ask him for power, position, or promotion, but for a kiss. Intimacy with Jesus Christ is more important than anything else he can give us. I mean, we could just live on that right there. Like we can just like we can just say the end right now and just and then that'd be great. So it says, so kind are your caresses. I drink them like the sweetest wine. So that's verse two. It says the word play here in the Hebrew similar is similar to a pun. The word for kisses and the word for take a drink of wine is nearly the same. The implication as seen by ancient, uh, um, what is this word? Expositors, so that looks about right to me, is that God's lovers will be drunk with love, the intoxicating kisses of his mouth. The Hebrew word for kiss, and I'm about to tear this word up, is Nasha, um, it's messed up. N a s h a q. <laughs> That's a Hebrew word. I don't know how to say it. Say it again, somebody. Nobody. Nahash. There you go. Whoop whoop, mama. <laughs> Which can also mean to equip or to arm for battle. We need his kisses to become equipped warriors for him. It's just amazing, and also is mind bending. Verse three, your presence releases a fragrance so pleasing over and over poured out for your name or for your lovely name is flowing oil. No wonder the brides to be adore you. (laughs) I love that. Love, love, love that. And then it says here for no wonder the brides to be adore you. It says, because of the order of the consonants, some Jewish sources translate this to say, the maidens of love, or the maidens love you unto death. Draw, draw me into your heart. We will run away together into the king's cloud-filled chamber. That's 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 that holies of holies, the cloud-filled chamber filled with his glory. It says the Hebrew text literally means the king's chamber inside a chamber. That's your holies. It says this points us to the holies of holies inside the temple chamber. Exactly. The holies of holies. It says, draw me into your heart. We will run away together into the king's cloud filled chamber. Now, this is the chorus of friends. It says, we will remember your love, rejoicing and delighting in you, celebrating your every kiss as better than wine. No wonder righteousness adores you. It says the kiss of God pours out blessings over our hearts. It is the warmth of his love that convinces us that his heart is turned forever towards us. The most common word for worship in the New Testament is prosikuno. I don't know. Sorry. (laughs) P-R-O-S-K. U-N-E-O, that's the Hebrew word, which means to fall on your knees before him, to kiss him. Our worship with deep affection is his reward. That is his reward. That's what he wants. So the Shulamite says, Jerusalem maidens, 
In this twilight darkness, I am so unworthy, so in need. It says here, the twilight darkness can also be translated as black. The Hebrew word or Hebrew root word used here for black or dark means twilight darkness or morning gray. So she's saying like, I, I know <laughs> I am so unworthy and so in need. You know, we're not sitting here saying, I just, I deserve all this. I deserve, we don't deserve it. We don't. And we know that, you know, a lot of times we can be a hot mess. We know that. But then the shepherd king comes back and says, yet yeah, you are so lovely. And she says, the Shulamite, I feel as dark and dry as the desert tents of the wandering nomads. The note here says literally dark as the tent curtains of Kedar. So there is a word play in the Hebrew as the word Kedar means a dark, a dark one or a dark place. This was the name of the one this was the name of one of the sons of Ishmael and represents our old Adam life. And the shepherd king responds, yet you were so lovely, like the fine linen tapestry hanging in the holy place. The Shulamite and her friends began talking. They say this. She says, please don't stare in scorn because of my dark and sinful ways. Obviously, it says, or many morning suns have darkened, stared at me. So we realize there's things that, about us or in us that are not right. We get that. Jesus knows that. He's, he understands that. And she says, please don't stare at me in scorn because of my dark and sinful ways. My angry brothers quarreled with me and appointed me a guardian of, or appointed me guardian of their ministry vineyards. Yet, I've not tended my vineyard within. We've talked about that. That's your soul. Won't you? So it's like people are yelling at me and they and like you, you want me to, to tender and take care of your garden, your heart, soul, your all those things, but I haven't even done my own, is what she's saying here. Won't you tell me, lover of my soul, where do you feed your flock? Where do you lead your beloved ones to rest in the heat of the day? Why should I be like a veiled woman as a wandering or as I wander among the flocks of your shepherds? So when she says, where do you lead your beloved ones? She sees her beloved as a shepherd. This is a metaphor of the role he takes in our eyes. We need not develop a literal storyline of a lover and a shepherd, but understand it is representation of the relationship between us and our beloved, which cannot be described in one symbol or one role. We, it, it's not just he's the shepherd king and da da da. He's more than that. This is just merely a picture. And when she says, "Why should I be a veiled woman as I as I wander among the flocks of your shepherds?" The Hebrew uses the verb ata, which means to wrap or cloak or veil. The Aramaic and Latin use the verb meaning to wander. So this translated, this translation has included both concepts. So again, when we talked about when you have, so when you have them trying to translate it from one thing to another, sometimes it could be things get lost in, in translation. And you have to go into the Strong's, but I love that this included all of it, the Aramaic the Latin, it included, included both into the concept. So the shepherd king says, verse eight, listen, my radiant one. See, when he took, unzipped that skin, it was radi like radiant, it, just, it was just glowing. All I was seeing is glowing, it's just glowing. Because there's, we're light beings, he is light. There's a, yeah, I hear Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is singing, I want to be in the light as you are in the light. I want to shine like the stars in the heaven. Oh Lord, be my light as you are my salvation. Cause all I want to be is, or something, all, cause something, I forget the end. Cause, cause all I want, all I want to be is in your light. Yep. That's from the newsboys. Thank you, Lord. But yes, he says, listen, my radiant one, 
If you ever lose sight of me, just follow in my footsteps where I lead my lovers. Come with your burdens and cares. Come to the place near the sanctuary of my shepherds. Or it can say, graze your goats by the shepherd tents. This is a metaphor that speaks of her responsibilities and labors. Your, our responsibilities and labors. He says, come, bring, bring it, bring all of it. Don't be trying to put it to the side and just come and be like, hey, here I am. Like, don't, what's all the other stuff you're supposed to have? Oh no, I just left that for a minute. No, bring it to him. <laughs> They're fine on the backside. So number nine, it says, my dearest one, let me tell you how I see you. You are so thrilling to me. The gaze upon you is like looking at one of Pharaoh's finest horses, a strong, regal steed pulling his royal chariot. Your tender cheeks are beautiful. Her cheeks represent her emotions revealed by her countenance. Her emotional life is alive and pleasing to the king. You can't, you know, he doesn't want us to be in shambles emotionally, having all kinds of emotional things wrong with us. We have to bring those emotional burdens to him and allow him to heal us there too. Your earrings and gem-laden necklaces set them ablaze. He says, or your neck is beautiful with strings of jewels. The ornaments upon her points to the gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit. Your adornments are on the inside of you. Again, he's not looking at your outward appearance, even though if he were to comment on your outward appearance, he would say you're beautiful, you're lovely, because that's how he sees you. We will enhance your beauty. So he says this. I love that he says this on verse 1, 11. <laughs> this is possibly the Trinity as we, which I'm sure it is, obviously. We, he's not inviting anybody else in but himself. So we, which will be involved in making every Shulamite holy and radiant. So he says, we will enhance your beauty with golden ornaments studded with silver. God always points to us to the divine. God's golden love and grace adorn or and grace adorn her now with beauty the concept of silver in the bible always points to redemption the price paid to set us free the cross is a stud of silver planted into calvary's hill that opened the gate fountain for all the world to drink from the shulamite verse 12 as the king surrounded me at his table the sweet fragrance of spike nerd awake in the night. A sachet of myrrh is my lover, like a tied up bundle of myrrh resting over my heart. And it says this tied up bundle of myrrh is an incredible picture of the cross. Myrrh, known as an embalming spice, was always associated with suffering. The suffering love of Jesus would be over the Shulamite's heart for the rest of her days. We have the revelation of our beloved tied onto the cross like a bundle of myrrh. Verse 14, he is like a bouquet of henna blossoms, henna plucked near the vines at the fountain of the lamb or at Ngandi, Ngandi or Ngenidi, might be saying that even better that way, means the fountain Ingedi. of the lamb. Say it again. In Getty. In Getty. Thank you. I got my, uh, my, my jukebox and my translator. Thank you. <laughs> the fountain of the lamb, the Hebrew word henna has a hononym that can mean atonement or redeeming grace. I will hold him and never let him part. And Shepherd King on 15 says, my darling, you are so lovely. You are beauty itself to me. Mom, we're going to have another one here for you to say. <laughs> the Hebrew word for beautiful is? I probably know this. Yapa. She's like, crickets now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying to help Vicky. She's trying to get in. <laughs> okay. Is it Yapa, Mom? Yay. What, what verse are you on? Uh, 15. Yay. 
Yay, pay. Your guess is good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> the Hebrew word for beautiful, yay, pay, is used five times to describe the Shulamite, and three times she is called hey, yay, pay. I'm not going to even do the next one because I just can't. <laughs> I don't even know any of those symbols except one. So I can't, which means the most beautiful woman. And eight times her beauty is extolled. Eight is the number for new creation. Hebrew linguist, linguist, am I saying that right? Linguistus? Why is that an extra S? Is, it, is that it? Okay, I'm like there's the S at the end. Okay, thank you. Link this word for beauty, which means to radiate, to burst forth, or to emerge from darkness, to project beauty. It's also related to the word uh, yefat, which means to create a sense of awe and wonder, or to be something special. You hear that? To be something special. You're something special. When we trace this word, yepat, or yepe, to, the, to its Semitic roots, we find it has the idea of a specialness or a uniqueness. I love that. He says, my darling, you are so lovely. You are beauty itself to me. Your passionate eyes are like gentle doves. The Hebrew text literally means your eyes are doves. Some see this as a a hippo, hippochorism, I don't even know what that means, but the dove points us to the Holy Spirit. She is commended for seeing him with spiritual revelation as she perceives the glory of the cross with its myrrh. The Shulamite, my beloved one, both handsome and winesome, you are pleasing beyond words. Our resting place is anointed and flourishing. Like a, like a green forest meadow bathed in light, rafters of cedar branches are over our heads and the balconies of pleasant smelling pines. Oh. It says, the, the footnote for 17, it says, or cypress, cedar and cypress, which are the most common which were the most two, I'm sorry, let me say that again, where, where the two most common woods used in construction on Solomon's temple. Obviously it was easy for me to say, but that ends us on song, a song, the first chapter. There's so much to take in, but remember that we, I mean, read it as many times as we want to. Read as many times as you want to, but remember the takeaways. The importance is, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. The important thing, the, some of the main takeaways here, not forcing God, forcing Jesus, or trying to beg him onto the scene, Oh, so thank you. Let's let's look at that word. Oh, look at the <laughs> look at how you say that. Yep, that wasn't very easy to say. So it says a f <laughs> oh form of a name or oh like a pet name. Okay, I like that. But the print that the way that it showed the pronunciation is worse than when it had in the footnote on here. That's worse. Uh, 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 but it's in the comments for anybody. <laughs> Everybody wants to give a, get a whack at that. Go right ahead. Or maybe, Taylor, you can press the little sound button and then tell us how it said that. But, um, <clears throat> oh, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. The important takeaway here is that you're not forcing Jesus. So, okay, he said, just go back and read the first. Okay, I'm just going to go back and read the first. Well, it's actually the second little note, but it's the first footnote here for the uh, for the Shulamite verse, it says to enter the doorway of Jesus's heart, 
we must begin by saying, let him. If you want to enter the doorway, a lot of times I, when, when I first started even seeing in the spirit in this way, I would always see a door. And I just knew, I just, that was my door. I would just go through that door. I, I just, that was the door. And I knew it was on the other side was going to be Jesus every single time. And so I love that it says to enter the doorway of Jesus' heart, we must begin by saying, let him. We only bring him a yielded heart and must let him do the rest. You cannot, you cannot try to pressure and force him into it and try to no, Taylor, you're not going to get away with that, honey. You just put on the volume and tell me what that says. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, uh, just so you know, Vicky's saying the passcode isn't working. She's been trying to get into the Zoom for a little bit now. Um, she says she uses Brave and not Safari. Um, but when I use Safari, it it goes past needing a passcode because it just launches in right, Zoom. Right, because it's supposed to just be able to hit the link. Yeah. Um, did she get the right link? Uh, I'm not sure. It, uh, but to pronounce it, hypocrisy. And <laughs> I, would, I pushed the volume to hear it. And I'm like, but wait, Kristen's talking. <laughs> <laughs> like it, so i pushed it a few times but that was the best way i heard it was hypocrisy hypocrisy thank you uh, i don't know if anyone else uses anyone else uses brave to um when you send out the zoom links but that's what she's having trouble using Okay, so she's saying that the password is what she's having an issue with. She might not be putting something in properly. Let me see. Oops. Well, um, yeah, there we go. Sometimes if you don't put the, if there's one thing wrong on that password, I mean, but hopefully she could just copy and paste it. I tried it, so what's the passcode? Yeah, she could just enter through Zoom, um, which actually reminds me that there's a way if you happen to have the Zoom app that it lets you, um, okay, well, let me, it lets you uh, like link up as far as a friend on there or contact, thank you, Lisa. It lets you become a contact on here and you just, and then it just lets you press the, when you see the, um, what is the Holy Spirit? Cause I just, I'm drawing a blank now. Yes, when you see the event, it'll show you like the events for the bell tag. You can just click on them and they will just open up. You won't actually have to do um, anything else. So it does have that option. I don't know. Try to do. I don't want to. Or, or about at the end. So it will have the replay. I'm sorry, Vicky. Um, I try to turn off the Facebook thing on here because it goes, ba-ding, ba-ding, you know, so I try to exit out of it. But um, yeah, it's fine. But yes, uh, that's what I was gonna say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me get it really quick. No, not you, not you, you. And yes. So you can't try and force him to do what you want him to do. So you could, you know, you can't be like, Jesus, I want you to encounter me. And then, you know, and then just be like, well, you know, please God, because you can't do that. You can't get into that. You can't get into that please and that pleading and begging and, 
and all that and don't get mad. And then, you know, you have to just bring him your yielded heart to accept him however he comes. You know, we want him to accept us however we come, but then we don't, you know, we'll get to where we don't want to accept how he comes because we only expect him to come a certain way. You didn't, you know, do this or, you know, I, I didn't do this or, you know, I just, I didn't, he didn't I didn't hear you and, you know, and, and that's my, you know, it's my fault because my life isn't clean up enough. No, Mm-mm. you just need to come with the yielded heart and let him do the rest. God's loving grace means that he will be enough for us, no matter how he chose to come. It is enough. Remember, I told you guys that, that Hebrew word, uh, die new. It means it would have been enough. No matter how, whatever you decided to do, it would be enough. We can let him be everything to us. We don't begin by doing, but by yielding. We have to yield to his spirit and yield to him. If and even if, because you know what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. That's, let me see. I think she might be saying something to me. Let me just double check. Okay, nope. Okay. Um, Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. it's just like with lily he could easily just had something happen the first day and she could have just been set free and everything the first day but it went on for like a week you know some sometimes there because of that that journey or that process especially in some of our lives there's some fleshing out that has to happen like like when it says that your love is tried you got (laughs) tried by fire you say that you love him and you're devoted to him but if he doesn't come up by day two and show the way that everybody else said he showed up. Now you now you're mad, and it's just like, well, I don't know. It's just not for me, or you or you go into depression instead of staying on him and just say, oh, I just thank you. Uh, in faith, I'm here. In faith, I know you're here, whether I see you, feel you, smell you, or not. And that that little that little bit, you're breaking chains off of yourself because. Yeah. Have you ever started to do something and then it was all great and it would, you, <laughs> yeah, like a like a like a fast or something? You're like, I'm gonna go and do that. It's all great, but by like day three, that same energy is not there, and you're ready to just give that up. Like, well, I know I said four days, but Lord, it was three, and at twelve o'clock midnight, I know I'm going downstairs. Jesus, you can come with me, or I'll come back up and see you. You know, where, where that's all we're looking at is that end product. You forgot all about you. You're supposed to be spending time in the word. You like it. Look at the clock. Mm-hmm. Five more minutes, Jesus. You know, <laughs> I already have the sandwich made, Lord. <laughs> it's just waiting in the kitchen. Woo-hoo. You know, and Jesus is like a mess. You know, just like, you know, just a mess. A lot of times we get so focused on that end product. I just want the end product. I just, I'm just going to see Jesus. I'm going to go to heaven. I have my whole list. What's going to happen? And then at the same time, be like, but you can do whatever you want, Jesus. And then when he doesn't fulfill the thing you wanted, because you're not ready for that. You're not ready for that. You're not fully surrendered. You're not fully yielded yet. That's okay. It's not a punishment. He's working something in you. He's got to work things in you so that you can hold and carry hold and carry what he has. You know, the point of getting your vessel ready, you're getting that vessel ready. I don't care how long it takes. You just make that commitment. Jesus, I don't care how long it is. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to be here every day at this time, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet with you every single day. Even if it's more than one time a day, and you know, you can just do whatever you want. Tell me whatever you want. You can tell me a joke. I don't even care. I don't care. I just don't care what you do. I just want to be with you. Now, 
you know, it said, it said in the second footnote, wasn't it? Yep. And the second footnote for this, for that second verse, because it had two, it, and it talks about the spirit kiss divine. But after that part, it says the Shulamite doesn't ask for power, position, or promotion, but for a kiss. Intimacy with Jesus Christ is more important than anything else he can give us. Than anything else. When he poured out his blood and broke his body, that was his intimate love beyond any love we can imagine. His intimacy is, there's no, there's no revelation beyond just being just him. There's no, so like some great revelation about, you know, some underground meeting somewhere and they're going to do that. None of that stuff. Who cares? I'm just, I'm just like, I don't care about none of that. I, don't, I just don't care. Lord, have your will, have your way. I will declare that your will and your way goes forth. But I don't even focus on that stuff. That's not where my hope is. My hope is literally rested in Jesus Christ regardless of how you decide to turn around the whole world. That's just not even my concern. I'm not concerned because, because why does that matter to me? It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I don't have, I'm not, I don't need, I don't need to be pacified by many things. The only thing that's gonna bring me completeness, just like for any prophetic word he's given me, I don't even care. I don't, I, I, I write it down and that to me is gold. I don't care about, well, so-and-so said this and da, da, da. I just, no one can take it from me that he said it and I just believe it. He confirms his word and it's in and done. I don't ask him to confirm it all the time. I just say, Lord, I just, or beg him to confirm it. I just say, Lord, I thank you for confirming it and just let it go. I thank you, Lord, your word is gonna, just, it's not gonna return void to you, but it's gonna do everything you accomplished to do. I don't care, I don't care about timeline. I don't care about none of that. Because I, my eyes are not looking at my calendar and my clock, but I'm just trying to keep my eyes looking at him. That's changed my life more than anything. Just putting my eyes on him. Just saying, Lord, let, let's just have your will. Whatever you want to do, please do it. Please do it. Because it's better than anything I could ever think. And when you get so entwined with him, I found, I mean, obviously, that there, I'm not like some revelation that I was just, you know, just beyond, you know, any better than anybody else. No, not by any means. But I can only tell you what I've learned and what he's revealed to me. But in my own life, what I've learned and what he's revealed to me is nothing else matters. I just find out how nothing else matters. Everything becomes complete. Everything becomes complete. When I, you know, worried, when I was worried about, I don't know, we don't have any money and da, da, da. When I would just spend time with Jesus and he would just show up and I don't care whatever we went to go do, even if it was nothing, even if we just watched TV together, it did not matter to me. Everything became right. Nothing was wrong. Nothing was broken. Nothing was, you know, no, it was just none of that. It just, everything was right and fixed and beautiful. And I'm just like, I just, Everything that I thought was nagging me in my life just faded away and it wasn't important anymore. And that's what you're going to find is the things that we just feel like we need to have that answer now. We need, we need to have this fix right now. I need to know this answer right now. I need, you know, whatever it is. You, you're going to, you're, thank you, Holy Spirit. Number one, you're going to build resolve, which is important. We need to have, we need to have a, a strong resolve of what we're going to do. We say we're going to wait for him. How long are you going to wait for him? You really say, Lord, I love you. I'm going to wait for you until you decide to speak to me, da, 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 but I will always be here. And I'm not going to be here crying and, and on the floor and feeling worthless, but I'm going to be here praising you. There's that song, this one song that I love by um, that. Uh, mm, thank you, Lord. What did you say it again? Schaefer, is it Rachel, um, from Oasis to, uh, with Tim Sheets, his daughter, the one that she sings, um, You'll Find Me Worshiping. I love that song. Love that song. I'll be the one giving glory 
declaring your goodness and glory. Lord, you are the one and the only, worthy of our worship. Find me in your presence. Find me on my knees. I won't stop singing your praises. You'll find me worshiping. The point, you'll find, she's talking to Lord. This is how you're going to find me. You're going to find me in your presence. You're going to find me worshiping you. You're going to find me declaring your goodness and your mercy, declaring your glory. That's how you're going to find me. I'll be the one. I'll be the one giving you glory and declaring your goodness and your mercy. That's who I'm going to be. You just need to, you have to make up your mind. Who are you going to be? Are you going to be the baby who needs to be pacified every single time? That doesn't mean can less love you, but you are less, you, you can't be trusted with much. And that's just, that is honestly a biblical truth. If he gives you much, then you, you have a lot of responsibility. You can't be responsible, but also want to be, take a baby stance and, and break and cry when things don't happen the way you want them to happen. You got to build up those walls strong because he sees you strong. You got to make up your mind. I'm not going to break. Yeah, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit reminded me again on that song by Disciple, Dear X, where he says, you know, go ahead. You know, you can, you can put a target on my forehead. You can fire, but you got no bullets. Where he says, you can bend, but you're never going to break me. Those feelings and stuff may come, but they don't have to break me. And I don't have to go into that whole cycle of depression or, or anger or, or whatever it is, lust or greed. I don't have, they might come tempting, you know, tempt, he says, you tempted me to look back. You tempted me to look back. But everything that we had together was a lie. We got to remember that. Everything that we had together was a lie. You ain't nothing but a liar. Devil, I don't want anything to do with you. These feelings, those emotions, all of those things. Remember, he's looking to see your emotions pure and beautiful, not crumbled into ash. It can't, if it, if it is, bring it to him and let him fix it and then have your resolve to keep it that way. Because he can't make you do what you're supposed to do. You have to put those things off. You have to. You're strong enough. Remember, he said that Lord has, the, one of the things he had me read was, you cannot be tempted beyond your ability to say no. Be tempted to be angry, tempted to be sad, tempted to be lustful, tempted to be jealous, tempted to be uh, like a, a, to covet. I mean, whatever. We're, <laughs> you know what I want I'm in closing? I want when Jesus looks at me to find his fruit in his garden. I'm his garden. You are his garden. I don't want him to show up and I literally have trees that are just, all my trees are immature and they don't produce fruit yet. Or what do I have to give him? A promise only at that point. A promise that when you come back next time, there's going to be something here. I don't want an immature tree. I want trees that are mature. That the canopy of the tree, you can sit under it. As one, you, know, you get you sit next to an immature tree. It's just a, a juvenile tree. You sit next to it. And it barely can shade you because it just doesn't have the leaves for that yet. It's just not there yet. Sometimes in, in certain areas of our life, we're just not there yet. And that's okay. But we keep watering it. You keep tending to it. It's important. You can't be like, well, I didn't water it for several days and then come back and just expect to have some exuberant growth. You have to water it and prune it and all those things. So important.
but I don't want to ever have Jesus walk into his garden and notice that there's just no fruit there. Yesterday I read, he said there were nine fruits. <laughs> I want those fruits to be ever present. I want there to be orchards of those, not just one of each kind, but an orchard many different kinds. I want to be able to say here, relax underneath the shade of these trees, put out a blanket and let me feed you for once. Here, look, let me, let me feed you your own fruits growing right here. And when you can do that, he then is going to say, now I want you to share these fruits with, with the others. Because remember, Every person has a purpose and you have people in your own sphere that you influence, that you have the power to influence because he's giving you that voice through him, not for your own glory so that you can feel like you've done something great and pat yourself on the back, but because he, this is what he wants out of sacrifice. And there was one verse where he says, you know, you're so lovely. I think it was one I read yesterday. You're so lovely. You're like a, a, a sacrifice, like they're ready to be like ready to be sacrificed. And it's like, <laughs> in some way in the natural, we could look at that like, that's a little bit twisted because don't they get burned? But hey, but see, it's not when we look at it in the spiritual eyes because it's a sacrifice that we bring to him. Our love, our, our life sacrifice, our life work what we're doing to accomplish for the kingdom. You know, and Jesus spoke to me a while ago and said, it's not about numbers. It's not about numbers. People look at that. People declare worth based off of numbers. There are mega churches here today that have zero spirit in there. It is not about numbers. It's not about a crowd. It's not about how many you drew. It's not about none of that. It's not about any of that. If you only drew two people, but, you, they, but together, y'all got sold out for Jesus. That was greater than, you know, someone who drew, uh, um, had like a million and over 75% of them just live the most lukewarm life there is. And then the other 25% are just, eh, okay. The Lord specifically talks about the lukewarm. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. He's not interested in that. He doesn't want his bride linking up with the world and having a, having a deep tie to the world in your spirit life. It's his sacred garden and that's what he wants to see in his sacred garden. You ready and all, all the fruits available. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that we are in life union with you, that you have made us worthy, that you've called us unto yourself, that we in faith, believing your words to be true, will, will be in a spirit union with you, that we can in fact become one as you and the Father are one. We thank you for teaching us, instructing us in love, for taking us by the hand. We thank you for your blood that you poured out for us, your sacrifice, your, you really are the bundle of myrrh resting above our hearts. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for coming in and honestly being everything to us, every single thing. We thank you, Lord. We affectionately take in faith, thanking you, knowing that this, this cup puts us in communion with you. It heals us, it delivers us, it sets us free, it brings us everything that we need because it is you. It's the very essence of who you are. And we take this in faith and in thanksgiving.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's all I have. The Lord is good, always. He's awesome. He's amazing. <sighs> so refreshing. He's such a refreshing spirit. Um, full of fire. If anybody has any questions or anything, you can um, always message me or you can ask in the group. It doesn't matter however you feel comfortable. The Lord is so good. Mm -mm -mm. But that is all I have. I'm either going to fall over or <laughs> it's hard to like open my eyes, but that's all I have. His presence is so beautiful. I just extend his peace to each of you. Love and mercy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Good. Have a good uh, rest of your day. I will see everybody again tomorrow. And Shalom be with everybody. Peace and Shalom.